Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's valued viewer request is from our good friend Tom Law. Cap, could you reenact this tanker incident? It's pretty boring, but of special interest to me. If you read the attached UBI report, it states that the attacker was unknown at the time. Our ship sent over a team to retrieve missile fragments to help determine the attacker. One of the fragments had the serial number of a Maverick AGM-65 missile on it. That fits the modus operandi of Iran at the time, attacking tankers with Air Force and Mavericks. This is going to need a little bit of background. Tom Law served on, I think it was an Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate in the 80s in the Persian Gulf. And he's written at least one book on this, which I've read. At the time, obviously, we're talking the Iran-Iraq War. One of the ways that Iran attacked Iraq was actually to attack oil tankers that were going to and from Iraq, one way or another, through the Persian Gulf. The idea being that they were going to starve them of their income through oil. So we've got many incidents of Iran attacking these vessels a lot of them using F4 Phantoms with AGM-65A or B models, I can't remember which. And we've got just such an incident here. Let's have a quick read. Now this is from 1984. Two missiles from an unidentified fighter jet slammed into British supertanker Tuesday on its way to salvage $45 million worth of oil aboard a ship crippled three weeks ago in the Persian Gulf missile attack officials said. The 261,000 tonne British Renown was off the coast of Bahrain when it was struck by the missiles, igniting a small fire that was quickly doused. The supertanker was only slightly damaged, the spokesman said. None of the 26 British crew was reported injured. I should say at this point as well, the reason the US was there was to police this. Because Iran wasn't just attacking Iraqi ships, in fact it was not attacking many Iraqi ships, it was attacking any commerce that dealt with the Iraqi oil. And so the US came in, did a good thing, which was to police the Persian Gulf. The British Renown changed course after the attack and headed to Dubai, where it was expected to arrive on Wednesday. There was no immediate comment from Iraq or Iran on the attack. The British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, reported it was believed Iran was responsible for the attack. In past attacks in the Gulf War, Iraq has quickly claimed responsibility, while Iran rarely reports its action in the Gulf. It was the second British ship hit in the Persian Gulf in recent months. The British carrier Charming was damaged in a March 1 missile attack. The owner of the supertank, BP, quoted the ship's captain as saying the missiles were fired by an unidentified fighter jet. It fired two missiles that struck the starboard number two tank and the foremast. There were no casualties. It said the attack was preceded by a reconnaissance flight of a four-engine spotter plane. A spokeswoman for Lloyds of London said the vessel was hit by two missiles in the forward cabins. Other shipping sources said one missile bounced off the deck while the other damaged some loading equipment. The attack on the British Renown was the latest flare-up in the nearly four-year-old Iran-Iraq war. More than 40 neutral vessels have been hit this year in the Gulf, most of them by Iraq, which has vowed to cut off Iran's oil revenues by destroying a strategic Karg Island oil export terminal and blockading its ports. Iran has attacked Gulf shipping in retaliation, mostly Saudi and Kuwaiti tankers. Saudi Arabia and Kuwait support Iraq in the conflict. And one more document, I think this is a study paper, massive paper, the Iran-Iraq War, the tanker war and the lessons of naval conflict. Go down to page 7, the 10th of July 1984. In an apparent case of mistaken identification, an Iranian F-4 attacked the 133,000-ton British tanker Renown while sailing to pick up crude from the tanker Tiburon, which has been struck by Iraqi missiles on 27 June. Following the appearance of a spotter plane, an F-4 fired two rockets at the tanker missiles, almost certainly. One bounced off the deck and another hit its oil loading equipment, igniting a small fire which was quickly extinguished. The attack took place on international waters. 70 miles northwest of Bahrain. Very interesting piece of history. Let's reenact. Welcome back, valued viewers. Now, for this reenactment, you really have to use your imagination. We've got no real choice about that. We don't have an F4 Phantom in DCS, so we're going to use things that we consider relatively close or as close as we can. Now, the two Vigans are a similar technology status as the F4 at Phantoms. We are carrying late 60s, early 70s style of the AGM 65A and B Maverick. So technology wise, basically the same as we would have on the old F4s in the Iranian inventory. 
Unfortunately, Pineapples doesn't have an old aircraft, so he's going to have a Harrier and he's going to have modern missiles, but at least the Vigans are going to be as true as we can get. We are on Kark Island and we are going to make a road takeoff because we want to be as undetectable as possible. We're going to head towards Bahrain because we've heard naval targets of opportunity, which our recce plane has told us about. We are going to go and fire some missiles at it and hopefully we don't hit a civilian target by accident. Leads, that's you pineapples, take off when ready. Our heading's gonna be about one, two, two. Roger, ready when Simba, when you take off, go full stage three burner. Just keep it straight on the rudder, she'll take herself off. Copy. Nav Thanks mode so. is standard. I'm afraid that we're gonna have to sacrifice these brave Iranian crewmen crew person rolling Ooh, right in the engine all right come on captain Let's screw this up like you always do stage three good driving man good driving look at that what a beast this weapon is straight up no problems at all Right, Khalid, we have you visualised. Just sorting out my hard to get it a bit prettier. And that one's about 122. Roger, set course, lights off, get low, and we are going hunting for vessels. Now, as far as I understand it, Valued viewers, the Phantoms, although they could carry four, maybe more, of the HM65s because of massive shortages in weaponry, a lot of the Phantoms would only go up with one AGM 65 at a time, often with malfunctioning equipment as well. Out of interest, the Mavericks on the Harrier are much more advanced, more modern. Foxtrot, uh, they Foxtrot, yeah, Foxtrot missiles with a modern IR sensor, whereas we had very basic low zoom, old school optical sensors on the front of our Mavericks. I can see it on uh, T-Pod. Right. Okay, lead. Right, lead, if you can please... Is it on our nose? Uh, uh, yeah, bang on our nose. Okay, you use your modern sensors, please, to just keep recce and keep a lookout for bandits. The phantoms are going to go in and make the strike to begin with. Okay. Yeah, uh, am I uh, clear to just pull off a bit? Yep, so off you, you go. We've got it visualised now. Phantoms, ANF master mode, RB75, AGM65. Uh, okay, visualize, visualize the renown on the nose. I'm going to get roughly level with it. A little closer. I'm going to get my spark on. Pops up, gain a bit of altitude. Gaining a bit of speed. Okay, we're going to move to our AGM 65 optical scope here. Let's see if we can visualize this baby. Come on, where are you, you little muck up? Right, I've got the island, so it can't be that hard to find the boat. 
however these scopes are notoriously bad oh i think i've got it it's a tiny little horizontal line just it's below moving. the island it's almost impossible it's right as well yeah lead i think lead is locked i've got to get in range now with the weapon which is going to be a bit further look at that lovely f4 phantom i am locked on now and it's going to be a little bit closer stage one burn cap is rifle agm out reboring searching for yes found it again lock and missile out following the rifles in she's a big old tanker boom boom hits okay phantom you carry on attacking harrier you have permission to engage gotcha. you never knew what hit her we don't see the British flag, of course. Good hit, whoever you were. Was that you, Simba? That was me. Well done. Look at you learning the Vigan. I mean, the Phantom. In real life, they would just do stealth runs. They would fire from maximum range, burn her on, and just turn around. But we're having a bit of fun, obviously. Pardon. Not very good. Rifle. Times, rifle times two. Watch out. Let's go and watch them go in. In real life, one AGM skipped off the deck, one exploded, causing damage. There were no casualties. Boom. Well done, boys. We've put it out of action. We've put it out of action. Get the rest of your ordnance off, and then it's RTB Kark Island ASAP. Go, go, go. As you can see, value viewers, we're a very low amount of fuel in this F4 Phantom, and so we're doing a very high speed in this F4 Phantom. We might even reach its top speed. Mac 1.6, these old F4 Phantoms really know how to rock. Mac 1.8, not bad boys, not bad. Already we can see Kark Island, we've just pretty much crossed the Gulf, the Persian Gulf at Mac 1.9. Fuel is 3%, 3%, I'm coming off burn. Supersonic on idle throttle, love the F4 Phantom. one and a half percent fuel super cruise ladies and gents cap one percent fuel mm. this is problematic at best hey i've got energy i've got max 0 0.9 so we're all good if anything i'm going to come in slightly hot i'm going to put myself down in the thick air because i want to slow down tally farp tally farp see the vehicles on the left guys on the left head out now right energy conservation energy conservation out gear out come on drop for me baby drop for me cut touchdown a little bit harsh but we're all right save it save it save it save it I've done better! I've done better! Oh, damn dead! That is a parked vehicle. That is a parked vehicle. I know it's parked a bit odd, but... Iranian standards. Iranian F4 standards. How have you got oh, rid okay. of all of your fuel so far? No, you're not allowed to use mm. the runway. You'll have to go on the road, like us. Go into town on the right. That's a, that's gonna. You're not going to make it to us. Go on the town on the right. Try not to screw it up. Do a good landing like me. <laughs> There we go, touchdown about 300. Don't stall it, don't stall it, Simba. You do not have permission to stall that aeroplane. And he stalled it. Though significantly less burny than me, apart from the fact it's gone through the ground. So, not sure what to say about that. Well done, boys. Right, possibly the world's most unrealistic reenactment, but it was a good bit of fun. Anything before I sign off, boys? Have you enjoyed that and see you later.